Another day, another leak from Copite, uh, changing the specs of the RTX 4070 this time. Now, I really hope this one turns out to be true because the 4070 specs had seemed a bit weaker than a lot of people wanted. Uh, so let's jump right into this, but then just, I mean, we all need to understand this could change, this could be wrong, this is a leak, this is not confirmed information, and don't worry, there's plenty of other information coming in this video that is confirmed. But at this point, if you want RTX 4000 news, you gotta go with leaks and rumors. So the idea here is that basically it's gonna be using the full um, AD104 GPU rather than the cut down version that we had seen reported on earlier. And this would give it um, 7,680 CUDA cores and 12 gigabytes of 21 gigabit per second GDR6X memory at, with a 300 watt TDP. And he's even giving us a, tie, a Time Spy Extreme score. Now, it's, it's really important to note that I think we need to understand this Time Spy Extreme score in terms of the context of recent tweets from Copite because um, he gave us a RTX 4090 um, uh, Time Spy Extreme score that I think he was implying was an actual Time Spy Extreme score, but then has followed up recently with some other GPUs with TSE scores, but he then has, has kind of said that those are estimated. So I think what he really means here is this is where he'd estimate this GPU's relative performance. I don't think I'm gonna assume this is an actual, this GPU has been tested in times by extreme. Although I could be wrong about that. I'm just gonna say that in the context of his other recent tweets, I would assume this to be an estimate of his own making rather than um, an actual times by extreme score. Uh, I, I don't know. Anyway, now the reason why this is a bit exciting, let me move my fat head out of the way, ah, um, is that if you look at this compared to the old rumored specs, the, um, the rumored specs had been that we'd have only 56 SMs instead of the 60 on the full AD104 die. Um, and then the CUDA cores again cut down a bit. So the thing is that these new RTX 4070 specs are basically the specs that he had been linking for a 4070 Ti just a few days ago. Um, other than that, that 4070 Ti, he had said, might have a TDP up to 400 watts, and this is being reported at 300 watts. Now, I still feel like 300 watts is pretty high for a 70 class card, um, but it, you know, it's at least within the power budget that a lot of people might actually have on their current uh, power supply. Um, but some of the other really good news here for a lot of people is a lot of people were disappointed with a 10 gigabyte card on a 160 bit memory bus with 18 gigabits per second of memory. And then, so all of this getting bumped up to 12 gigabytes on a 192 bit bus, 21 gigabit per second memory, uh, really greatly increasing the bandwidth overall uh, is definitely good news. Now, again, though, this could be wrong. Now, a lot of people are probably gonna accuse Copite of just, you know, oh, he's just changing things all the time. He must just be throwing numbers out there guessing. Um, so let's do a quick recap on, oh, so why do we report on what Copite says? Well, for one thing, uh, when it came to the previous generation of GPUs with, with the RTX 3000 series and all of that, uh, Copite was one of the first leakers wh who did end up leaking correct specs well in advance of the launch or that information being publicly available. Um, so that would imply that Copite does have inside sources somewhere within either NVIDIA or somewhere in its supply chain, you know, the, the manufacturing chain. A lot of times leaks like this would come from some kind of factory somewhere where they have to be in the know on what some of the parts might be. There's all sorts of places these leaks can come from. Now, that being said, you know, I, I think the other thing we need to keep track of here is we, he, we knew there was an AD104 with these specs. What he's changing really is from calling it a 4070 Ti to a 4070. And that would mean that his old leak of the 4070 with the AD104 cut down with these specs, again, doesn't necessarily mean it's wrong. It just means that it might not be a 4070 now. Perhaps this will be your 4060 Ti, which if his you know performance estimates are, are correct, which that's the part that I think he is basically guessing on, given the specs, um, 
uh, you know, you know, that would put it pretty close to the 4070 and that could give you something similar to where we had like the 3060 Ti really close to the performance of the, of the 3070 and making a much better buy here. But what I want to get at though, is I don't, I think too many people are, are thinking about, you know, what are these called? Because I mean, realistically, that's what we have to go on right now. Whether we call this a 4070 or a 4070 T, Ti, to me doesn't really matter. What matters is its price, because if it's priced at like $600, that means it's the pricing, uh, you know, successor to the 3070 Ti, not to the 3070, regardless of if you call it a 4070 or not. So I think what's really gonna matter um, is, you know, sure, there are these specs, they exist, but what does it end up costing us? And that's what we definitely don't know right now. So anyway, we'll see how all of this goes. Um, if you wanna see what do these times by extreme numbers, you know, how does that stack up against other current chips and all of that, uh, the video, uh, sorry, the WCCF tech article on this same leak, uh, I guess I need to slide over to the other side, ah, to get out of the way. Um, has made a graph out of times by extreme scores. But what I want to be so clear on is that while um, Copite has said that he thinks this 4090 score of around 19,000, he put it as greater than 19,000, um, was a real times by extreme score. The other times by extreme scores he's leaked again, I think are estimates. I don't think those ones are based on actual testing. So we've got to be really careful on that. But this is what this would look like if you stack it up with some current gen chips and his leak. So that would put the 4070 new leak specs if he's actually correct about this 11,000 score, which I know I just repeat myself, but we, we can't be sure this is actually correct. This would put it between a 3090 and a 3090 Ti. And you know, he did say greater than 11,000. So what I think he's basically claiming is that this will have around 3090 Ti class performance. Um, that would also put it, you know, right up there with your 6950 XT and, and things like that. Now, uh, you know, that is a very strong chip if that ends up being true and we'll see what sort of pricing it comes in at. Uh, that, that can only be good to see. And again, the rumor of the 4080 puts it, you know, kind of up here. So you'll see, by the way, that rumors are putting a larger gap between the 4080 and the 4090 than there was between the 3080 and the 3090. So it's looking like Nvidia is going, and this does line up with the specs we're seeing, for wider product segmentation between those, um, those classes. Now, um, that's about all I wanna say about this, because again, leaks and rumors, we can only uh, get so much from that. However, we are getting some more confirmation on when we're gonna be seeing the new Ryzen 7000 CPUs from AMD. Uh, with several um, pretty uh, sources seeming to line up saying that we'll hear uh, an announcement on August 29th, with more of an official, you know, launch happening around September 15th on the Ryzen 7000 series. Um, and that we've seen a couple of sources, WCCF Tech quoting their own sources, as well as XP, uh, uh, X-Preview uh, with, um, I guess, their own sources as well, but these uh, leaks lining up with each other, so this seems to be some kind of confirmation. Um, it's... So basically, again, this is still leaked and rumored, but uh, this is pretty high confidence. We should be seeing these on September 15th um, with a full unveil on August 29th. And the specs that we should see here, and you can see the Ryzen 5000 series um, you know, to compare to, is that basically the core counts and thread counts are staying the same, right? You'll still have your, your six core 12 thread, your eight core 16 thread, your 12 core 24 thread, and your 16 core 32 thread chips, with the major difference being the clock speeds. The base clocks seem to be jumping up like your 5600X to your 7600X is actually a full one gigahertz boost on the base clock. Some of these other chips not getting a full gigahertz boost, but, but others will, like the 5950X going from 3.4 to 4.5. But again, that's on the base clock. The boost clocks though, um, 
uh, are still going quite high with the 7950X looking like it's gonna have the top boosts of 5.7 gigahertz, the 7900X at 5.6, 7700X at 5.4, and the 7600X at 5.3. I think one of the more interesting things here, although we have seen this uh, leaking out prior to this, this seems to be more confirmation of it, is that um, it looks like the launch is gonna have the eight core chip be a 7700X, not a 7800X. Notice that the Ryzen 5000 series launched with a 5800X and only like a year or so later came out with that uh, 5700X. So that does seem to be a bit of a difference and perhaps that's leaving room for a 7800X that is gonna maybe have higher clock speeds, maybe will it be combined with a V-cache thing like we saw happen with the 5000 series. Um, we're certainly expecting some 3D V-cache coming, we just don't know exactly when yet. Um, the other main thing to note is that the, uh, the TDPs have certainly increased. Uh, the 5600X was only a 65 watt part, well, whereas the 7600X looks like it'll be 105 watts instead of 65 watts. Um, the, the 7700X will be at 105 watts like the 5800X was, um, whereas the 7900X is jumping up to 170 watts from 105 watts and the 7950X up to 170 watts. And I think that they, um, they can even draw more power than that um, in their boost configurations. We're seeing like the 7950X going up to 230 watts in boost configurations. Um, uh, now the other uh, bumps up we're seeing in terms of uh, performance spec related specs are that the L3 caches are, are remaining the same, but the L2 caches are getting some small bumps. So overall, um, I, we're not expecting a massive performance jump uh, from this generation, most of what the the jump is going to be is related to the clock speeds, whereas the IPC itself, I think, is rumored to be around a 15% or so um, uh, uh, jump. But anyway, it looks like we'll be getting uh, more information about this stuff coming up soon here. So we'll have to wait and see. Now, we did also see uh, a Ryzen 7000 chip, which was probably the 7600X, uh, being demoed for not for the purposes of its CPU performance, but this platform was being used by Fizen to demonstrate PCIe 5.0 SSD speeds. And it looks like they were able to, in crystal disk mark, um, get over uh, the 10,000 mark there for megabytes per second. So that is looking plenty fast if you get one of these PCIe Gen 5 drives. Now, do you have anything you actually need to be running at that speed? Uh, that remains to be seen. Now from upcoming Intel chips, we've seen a uh, overclock for the i7 13700K hitting almost 6.2 gigahertz on this qualification sample. Now notice that th th that doesn't mean you're gonna be hitting those kinds of clocks because <laughs> uh, we didn't get um, information on the kind of cooling used here but uh, apparently this was done on a 1.5 volt um, uh, you know, power budget there. So anyway, I mean, th that's getting some pretty good you know, CPU-Z single thread cores on that boost, and it, it, it's cool to see clock speeds that high. But again, um, I, I, this looks like kind of extreme overclocking to me, and I, I don't know if that would mean that we'd, want, we'd expect to just be running our games at that speed or anything like that. Uh, in other overclocking news, we've seen AMD's Threadripper Pro 5995WX uh, get overclocked to 5.15 gigahertz and beat the Cinebench world record, which is kind of neat, although I'm fairly certain this one was done on LN2. Yes, this was done um, <laughs> on LN2. So this is absolutely not something that you would be doing, even if you had a Threadripper. Anyway... <laughs> Um, we're also seeing Intel's 13th gen Raptor Lake delitted with a slightly bigger die than Alder Lake and it looks like um, up to 420 watt maximum power limit. Although I believe that this delid was unsuccessful in terms of, I, I, I think it's being reported that it, uh, it no longer worked <laughs> after um, breaking off a single capacitor and fusing it back again and testing it. And this looks like this was um, done by uh, XP Review, X, -pre X Preview. Anyway, so kind of interesting there. 
uh, if you want to take a look at that up against the delitted 11900K and 12900K, there you go If in terms of uh, sizes, if you want to look at the die size. Now, uh, how about some Intel Arc graphics? We did see the A750 demoed in control at 1440p high settings. And um, given that some performance numbers were available here, it looks like WCCF Tech has followed up on this and tested out in RTX 3060 and an RX 6600 XT in that same general area and settings. This was high settings, no ray tracing. Um, and did about the same kind of test. So this, to be clear, these were not tested on the same platform as the Arc A750. This is WCCF Tech testing these GPUs on their own platform to try to imitate the test that Intel demonstrated on the A750. And these were the performance results. The A750 was averaging 60 FPS, where the 3060 was 52, and the uh, 6600 XT was averaging 50. Um, and that does seem to be pretty well in line with Intel's claims that it will be around 15% faster than the 3060 and 20% faster than the 6600 XT in games that run well. That's the claims that they've made uh, for, for games that actually run well, but you know, with their driver situation, there will be many games where that is not the case. Now, in further Intel GPU news, Intel has announced some SIGGRAPH 2022 demos. Now, this is more of a professional-focused event rather than gaming-focused event, um, but it does look like they will be demonstrating ray tracing with D5 on Intel Arc Pro graphics, and they're also mentioning um, uh, XCSS technology here. So this isn't going to be done with... Um, uh, you know, in, in gaming, but uh, but it looks like they're um, running Trimble Inc. SketchUp with D5 renderer. So anyway, kind of interesting if you're more on the professional application of these GPUs. Now, in terms of absolutely pointless things for an Intel Arc GPU to have, why an A380 would need a water block? No one knows, but apparently if you're interested and you have the Gunner Intel Arc A380 Photon 6GOC model, uh, you can now apparently get a water block for it. So that's a bad idea, but there you go. Now, ASRock is getting into the Intel Arc A380 game with a Challenger ITX graphics card launch, and this looks like $192, um, but this is uh, a conversion from 1299 RMB. So I don't, I don't know. I'm, I'm hoping in the U.S. market we, we see a lower price than, than that because otherwise, I don't know what the point is. Guys, <laughs> these need to be cheap for anybody to have any interest in buying them, in my opinion, other than just playing with something new with the knowledge that it's basically broken in a lot of games and driver software and all of that. Uh, and some other quick news, GeForce Now is adding 38 games throughout August of 2022, uh, and I'll move my ah, fat head out of the way again. And now I can't take the time to read through all of these, but feel free to kind of skim there. Whole bunch of games being added to uh, GeForce Now. And then um, uh, in some kind of Intel delays news, we're seeing from Trendforce that uh, TSMC is slowing three nanometer expansion because of Intel orders being delayed. So it says, according to Trendforce research, Intel plans to outsource the tiled TGPU, which I think is the tiled GPU chipset for Meteor Lake, uh, to TSMC for manufacture. Mass production of this product and was initially planned for the second half of 2022, but was then po postponed to first half of 2023 due to product design and process verification issues. But then recently, the product's mass production schedule has been postponed again to the end of end right end of 2023 for some reason. <laughs> Yay! Anyway, um, so there's that. Now, in a little bit of Steam Deck news here at the end, uh, at the end um, Marvel's Spider-Man Remastered is Steam Deck verified, and we're seeing that Steam Deck is now coming to new regions. Starting today, you can reserve Steam Decks in Japan, South Korea, Taiwan, Hong Kong, uh, with the help of uh, Komodo, Steam Deck's authorized reseller in those regions. So if you're in one of those regions and we're interested in a Steam Deck, you can now reserve those, and I hope all of you have an excellent day. Wait, that's not my stop recording button. There we go.